So thank you for spending your prime evening time with me. I will try my best to entertain you with this paper about social media and government responsiveness in China. And this is joint work with Yi Xing Mei, who is a PhD student at Hong Kong U. So this paper is really trying to look at the, the relationship between social media and the state. And we have we know media it has a is a is long known to be the, the fourth state, at least in democracy, which means the media plays an important watchdog role, pressing the governments to respond to public needs. And this sort of traditional wisdom has been verified in the economic literature of the media economic literatures. And I just cite a few examples. And it's debatable. So the role, the, the, the media role is now debatable in the era of social media. On the one hand, social media, we know it, we observe a much more rapid and massive circulation of political information on social media than on traditional media. And this generates a huge information shocks to countries with little pre-existing informational diversity like China, in which we know medias are mostly controlled by the, by the government. On the other hand, social media information is very noisy. It is fake and, and easy to manipulate. And some political scientists claim social media is the cause or is a cause of political turbulence in many countries. So we don't really know whether social media is unclear. The answer is unclear whether social media will improve government responsiveness and accountability or not. And uh, we know there is an emerging literature on the political economy, political role of social media. However, even within this literature, there is limited evidence on the effect of social media on government behavior and public policy. So without, without, with limited evidence, with little evidence, how do we think about this issue? So in this issue, there are two theoretically, uh, based on our common sense or what we observe in reality, there are two potential channels monitoring if all mechanism underlying the monitoring effects of social media one is the information channel so social media help inform governments of policy outcomes and citizen needs and this is a very traditional mechanism and it also has the virtue of improving transparency and you might say no in china this is really irrelevant because in chinese social media social media is controlled by the governments and is, is extensive censors. And this is not necessarily true. This channel is viable even in an authoritarian regime like China, because in the areas of common interest, such as public health, food safety, environmental protection, the central governments and the public, they share common interest. And social media serve as an important communication channel between the top leaders and citizens. So again, of course, I will show you evidence that this is this is true. This is a, a is a hypothetical mechanism, and another mechanism is pressure. So there are two type of pressure could be can be created by social media. One is the bottom up pressure. So, for example, grassroots political participation in like voting in democracy or protest in authoritarian regimes they will increase government sensitivity to citizens' needs. And another channel is is maybe more relevant in the Chinese setting is the top down top down mechanism. So here, public vis visibility and attention will generate top down top down pressure on local governments. And and these different channel, different mechanism will have very different implications for accountability. And one purpose of this paper is try to try to discriminate among uh, between different mechanisms. So in this paper, let me give you an overview. We are trying to study how and whether and how social media affect local government's procurement of vaccines in China during the period 2014 to 2019 is before COVID. So I should clarify upfront. And, and why do we focus on, public, on, on procurement of vaccines? The, there are several reasons. One reason is that public, public procurements accounts for a significant share of government expenditures or GDP is almost 10% in advanced countries, OECD countries, and it's 3% in China. And it's, a import, it's very important for accountability and state effectiveness. 
And we focus on the issue of vaccine because this is an issue that the top leaders and the public share common interest and is not censored. I will show you evidence. And, 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 and at least we observe social media information about this issue is abundant. And the data we have is, as I said, is between 2014 to 2019, we used two major type of data. One is the records of government procurement of vaccines and related products. And the other is the Xinan Weibo post, is the Chinese equivalence to Twitter for those people who don't know Chinese social media. And the empirical strategy we are going to use is user event study. The event study generates a difference in difference identification strategy, and we are going to also incorporate the IV approach in the estimation. And the basic idea is to exploit the abrupt changes in the information landscape on social media induced by certain events. So that is a very general and rough idea. It will become clear when I when I talk about the, the event setting. And in case I don't have, I'm sure I don't have, I won't have enough time to 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 tell you all the messages. And I so let me give you a preview of the main findings. So the main finding is in cities experience a more intense informational shock means the more intensive Weibo discussion about vaccine safety. The local governments in these cities will improve the transparency of vaccine procurement. How? By increasing the share of open bid, which is a competitive auction format of procurement, as opposed to some private negotiation, private arrangement. And the local government will also increase online interaction with citizens by blogging more about vaccine safety and government accountability online. And this is a very cheap way of, of, of indicates the responsibility of government. And we also find, importantly, this is different from the literature, we find that local governments respond to event-specific information shocks instead of general wave of penetration. In the literature, the focus is more on social media as a technology. So it's a long-term effect of social media as a technology. And here we find in China, local governments really respond to, the responsive is very event specific. And also we find the main mechanism is, is, is local government's sensitivity to top-down pressure. And we find the, the social media effect is stronger when local political leaders have a stronger career concern is younger or in the early stage of their career, and the effect is stronger in cities at a lower administrative rank, and, is, and the, the result is not is not long is not stronger or is even weaker in cities, is in the in the big cities where the demand for high quality vaccine is higher. So this is the main findings of the paper, and let me go, go to the to the background. So vaccine in China, we know all of us, we know vaccine is, a, is an important issue in, in China, in almost all the other countries. And it's a public health issue. And there are two categories. One is just one and two. So category one includes 14 vaccines, including the DPT, MMR. And these are compulsory and they are offered to, they are paid by the government. So they are, the consumer don't need to pay anything for, for taking these kind of vaccines. And the coverage is very high in China is more than 95% and in big cities is almost 100% and is well regulated market. And the second category is called category two by official definition, including chicken pox, flu, rabies, and some substitutes of category one. And this is on a voluntary base. Consumers have to pay from their own pocket and the coverage rate is really low. On, on average across China is about 10%. In big cities like Shanghai, Beijing is, is about 20, 20 to 25%. And this, is, this market is not well regulated. And so our focus will be on the category two market. And this is the second largest in the world, only after the US and is with a 50% growth rate. So this is huge market, enormous market. And in terms of production, there is a home bias. So there are, all, there are 35 producers in the market, 91% are domestic producers, 9% are from multinational firms. And the profit margin is super high. So according to some documentation, it shows that the retail price, that the price the consumer pay eventually to the factory price is more than 
So that's opportunity for, for, for corruption. And in this for vaccine, government procurement play a central role. Since 2005, all vaccines and related products, including equipment and services for storage and transportation, must by law, it must be procured by local governments, meaning these providers cannot sell directly to hospitals. And there are four formats of procurement. One is the is open bid. Open bid means that you have to invite all eligible suppliers and make the information public. And then you can organize a it is a subic auction format, the first price subic auction in the in the Chinese setting. And other than this one, this is a default format required by the government. And the, there are three other formats. The other is invited, one is invited bid, meaning you invite several, three or usually between three or five suppliers to, it is an auction, but it's with a with limited number of bidders. And another is called negotiation. So you negotiate with a provider. If you are happy, both parties are happy, you settle down on a deal. Otherwise, you continue to negotiate with another party, another, another supplier. And finally is a, a assignment. So you are really assigned one supplier, a single supplier. And the purpose of, of focusing or emphasizing open bid by the central government is they try to improve transparency to reduce corruption. And also maybe with this competitive bidding, the government can decrease the, the price. And the decision, so the decision on quantity, the quantity of procurement, the scope of procurement and the formats, they're all decentralized to the prefectural level, FDAs and the centers of disease controls. And the reason there's the reason for resisting open bid, good reason and bad reasons, the bad reason is corruption. And there is a good reason for the local government to resist open bid is, is efficiency. So this is particularly important when there is a shortage of supply or there is an unexpected surge of demand. So there is a gap and you want to fill the gap in the market. Format, it will take too long, usually it takes between six to nine months to organize an open bid. And for the other format like negotiation or private assignment, it takes usually less than three months. So, so there is a trade-off here. And there is a quality, you can call it a quality quantity trade-off. Maybe when you use open bid, it's more transparent, so there, there are less corruption and the quality may be better, but you lose the, the efficiency in the sense of, of time. Another reason for local government to resist open bid is they claim that some vaccines or equipment, they're highly specialized and has to be customized. So, and, and in the Chinese vaccine market, there's full of scandal, full of problems. And as many of you know from, from, new, from news, so there are these three types of problems. One is related to products. So they, 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 the supplier, they, they offer substandard defect, expired products, vaccines, and the service, they, they has problematic because they use different inappropriate ways of storage and transportation. And in the middle, there is these distributors or subcontractors. They are not quite qualified. They don't have a, 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 a license, but they still operate in the market. And another issue is the category two vaccines are really expensive for, for many people. And in the last two decades, we observed more than a dozen of, of scandals in the last two decades. And I just give you several examples. One famous one, one example is Sanxi province 2007 and the vaccine exposed to high temperature for a long time, but it was still provided to, to hospitals and it led to more than 100 deaths of dis and disability of young children. Unfortunately, the news was covered up by local government until it was reported by a journalist from Beijing in 2016. And another event that we are going to we are going to exploit, we call it a focal event, is the Sandong vaccine scandal in 2016. So in this case, a vaccine distributor sold defective and expired vaccines for six years in many, many provinces. And it led to less 350. 50 people involved in the scandal were arrested. Among these people, 64 were civil servants. 
And there are some events like more recent events in 2017 and 2017 and 18. There are two events, two scandals involved, involving the same company in Jilin province, the Changchun Changshan scandal. Basically, this company, this is a listed company. It produces substandard vaccines because it is a listed company. It has to report. You have to put this production in the in the annual reports, but they fake the records. So the the result is that they they the the regulator finally the the regulator the court sentenced the fifteen put fifteen senior managers in 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 jail and the company was was delisted. So these are several important uh, typical scandals, and we are going to focus on the two thousand sixteen Shandong province. And let me give you a little bit background about social media in China. And the social, there are many different kinds of social media in China. We are going to focus on the Xinjiang Weibo, which is the Twitter type of social media. And it has launched its first service in August 2009. And the number of users was not that much in 2009, but one year later, it increased dramatically and reached the peak of 500 million users in 2013. It declined after 2016. 16 because of WeChat, but it remains a really important platform for, for discussing social, social issues. And when we talk about social media in China, we cannot get around the issue of censorship. And according to many existing studies, and I cite two famous one is basically talk about the Chinese censorship of social media is very strategic, and they censor censor information against the regime, but allow criticisms of, of governments, particularly local governments. And in some of some of other research, like my co-author and I, we found that there, there was ample discussion about issues that the regime and the public share common interest, such as local corruption strikes and very local uh, small protest. And the local governments cannot so how does the government control social media or, or Xinjiang Weibo? So first of all, the service providers, they direct, the company, they are directly controlled by the, by the National Internet Information Management Office in Beijing. The government has little power to, to, to intervene the, the operation in the operation of, of Weibo and other social media. And what they do, they typically they operate Weibo accounts to make policy announcement and interact with, with citizen, citizen users. And another way this is maybe many of you don't know is some like, local Chinese local government invest heavily in information and communication technologies. In particular, they procure, they purchase this called public opinion monitoring system is something like an AI system or software. And in the in the before the local the focal event we are going to study in 2016, two, 221 is more than two thirds of Chinese prefectures have already procured this kind of system. They are going to use this system to monitor public opinion. And one part of the paper we are going to imitate this system. We are going to develop machine learning technology imitating the Chinese local government system to gauge public opinion and to see how, how it affects the government behavior. So the data we are going to use, as I said, we have two major data sets. One is about vaccine procurement, and we basically collect from national and local government's websites. And we have data on, we believe is pretty comprehensive, is all vaccine-related procurements, including more than 30,000 items. And for each procurement, we know the name of the government, the date, the items, and formats of procurement is open bid or non-open bid, and agencies, the procuring agencies, and the winners of the, 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 of the, the, the surprise, the, the winners of the, of the procurement. And for the Sinan Weibo data, we first collected half a year of data by ourselves, and then we talked to a third party provider, and we we basically our data. So they provided some data to to us, and our data, our own collecting data, account for about ninety five percent of their data. So their data are more comprehensive. So we buy the data from these third party providers, and they cover. So they basically is all the posts containing the Chinese word vaccine. 
And all together within this sample periods, we have more than 3 million posts about talking about vaccines. And it's important because we're going to use regional variation, city level variation, informational shock. So we need to know the location of the users. And we use the self-reporting location at the prefectural level. And we, because among these users, 5%, they allow Sina Weibo to track their location, their, their real-time location. So we compare this 5%, we draw random sample for this 5%, and 95% the location information is consistent with the self-reporting location. So we are pretty confident the self-reporting location is quite accurate. And this is different from, from Twitter. And that we find we try to find evidence of censorship, but we fail. And we we did find no evidence of censorship on vaccine topics until 2020, when COVID becomes COVID vaccine vaccination becomes a became a hot topic. How do we do this? What we did is that we post the keyword vaccine on a website based in the US. And this website repost the we both post deleted by the censors by the Chinese government. So they censor the Chinese government censor them post and they and there is a company or organization that collect this post and repost on a on a American on a US based website. So we type the, the the keywords vaccine and we could not find anything until 2020. And we type other keywords and we always can find like even like location like Shanghai or the name of political leader, we can always find some deleted post before before 2020. So this is some evidence of no censorship. And we try to use the we try to have an idea, give you a sense about what this post is about, this more than three million post is uh, uh, about. So and this is just a word clouding. And we find that a large number, we use both most manual reading. I shouldn't say manual reading. Anyway, we read a post by ourselves and also we use machine learning. So we find a large number of posts is talking, of, they are talking about general issues instead of vaccine quality or safety problems. That means the information is, is noisy, is, the posts are noisy. And we find a significant number of posts has some monitoring implication, meaning there are complaints complain about the safety issue and crit criticize the government why the government did not monitor the situation seriously, did not make good policies. But very few posts refers to specific government units, officials, or, or firms. So it's important for our purpose, for our study, it's very important to isolate, to identify what are these we call monitoring posts. And this is because this is the post has power. To, to, to monitor government behavior. So we use a machine learning approach to classify post. So we define a post called monitoring post, post with monitoring implication, and the negative sentiment post, the post with negative sentiments. And then we also want to know what are citizen posts, what are government posts. And what we did is really using very simple machine learning approach like SVM, those kind of approach, because the purpose is not to show fancy technology. The purpose is try to imitate this local governments, the, the Chinese local government's monitoring system. And we talked to industry experts. They told us that these are the, the kind of sentiment analysis and the SVA support vector machine approach. These are the most common methods they use in this kind of software. So that is why well, in the paper, we, we give the, the detail of the, these approaches. For the interest of time, I don't think it is wise to talk about this approach here. So just to clarify, so what would the government observe is that because people are talking about so many topics, is that the government has an expert on each topic because there's so many things, right? How would yeah. they detect that there's something about uh, negative about the vaccine? There are numerous things, right, on the on the label. How could we know this? So, I mean, so the government, so there are two approaches. One is that there is an event, and then the government suspect people are talking about these issues. So they go to the website, the Xinan Weibo, and there is an advanced search function 
they type in the keywords and then they attack. the advanced function allow you to to locate the post within a certain location like a city and then you search this is the easiest approach and the more advanced approach is to use this monitoring system they procure in China there are 800 companies supplying this kind of product this is software so and as I said more than 200 prefecture they procure them they have this software already so they use the software so they can do some like AI system artificial intelligence and they can do this kind of more like classification or they do a very simple sentiment analysis yeah, I understand if there's an event, if you trigger response, they can follow it. But in normal times, I'm just, I'm just curious, it's not a necessary. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they, 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 have a, they have an officer. Okay. They have an information officer. They, they, the, the job is to, sometimes they belong to the, to the propaganda department. Sometimes they belong to the, to the mayor's office, something, something like that. And then they kind of, this, the job of this person is to monitor information flow on social media. Yes, but I imagine that I have, there are many, many topics, right? Like yes. say this one or many that yes. was okay. Yeah, if they don't observe a spike, maybe they neglect the information. Yes, I want the then for your design that has to be some event or it's a general, uh, responsive for social media. Uh, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will show you in the in two slides. So okay. I will show you two slides. <laughs> yeah. So this is the information flow. And then I will show you uh, in two Yen slides. Hui? Yes, yes. Yen Hui, can I ask a follow up clarifying question? Yes. Should we think of these categories as mutually exclusive? Uh, like, so monitoring and negative sentiment, you could think that there's some overlap here, right? Uh, yeah, so is the course. machine learning a binary classifier? Yeah, yeah, no, this is, sorry, I, I, I should be, so this is different, this is different approaches. So it's a binary classifier between monitoring posts versus non-monitoring and another classifier to negative sentiments versus positive and neutral sentiment. And uh, monitoring posts are a subset of, is not exactly a subset, but is, is largely a subset of negative sentiment post. Yeah, Thanks. Thank, thank you for the yeah, question. So this is the information flow. So let's focus on the on which one. So the total post this is the number. Of, this this dotted line. This is the number of posts talking about vaccine. It doesn't need to be complaining. It just maybe let's say, oh, I take my kids to to take vaccine today, including this kind of post. And you can see is 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 much larger than the real the the the, the post the, the informative post. The, the post with information value. And then, so this is basically capture the attention of, of, of that things in a, in a certain month over, over our, uh, during our sample period. And then this is the monitoring post. Is the, is this light, this really light blue and light. And you don't really see that much variation during normal time. Only when the event period, then you observe a spike. So they're basically monitoring the spike, and uh, and the negative sentiment post in their more variation here, there's more variation during regular period, and we are got in the paper we report both results, but in the for our identification purpose we focus on the monitoring post, and because this is really create a, a dramatical change in terms of information landscape. And these posts, we believe, are more relevant than, than sentiment, sentiment post. And so after I show you the summary statistics, I will get back to Zhuishi's question. So, so, the, the, so the main outcome variable will be the share or the number of open bits. And the right-hand side variable will be the total number of posts and the monitoring posts and negative sentiment posts. And the observation is the prefactor month level. So, and this is the summary statistics of the major variables. And what I want to draw, I want to draw your attention is that the mean of the number of procured items is smaller than one. And this is because there are many zero in the data, meaning when a prefecture in a certain month, there is no procurement and we call it as zero. And when the, another, another observation I want to draw your attention is that when we talk about the share of open big procurement, the number of observation drop dramatically. It, because that 
when we calculate the stress, the denominator cannot be zero. So it has to be the case that there is at least one procurement in the in the in the in the city in the in the in the month, and the mean is sixty percent. So it's not one hundred percent. One hundred percent means that they comply com completely with the central government's the regulate the regulation requiring they use the open bid. So the Weibo variables, as I said, total post, the number is much higher than the other more specific post, suggesting there are a lot of for our purposes, there are a lot of there are a lot of noises in the in the data, and the number of monitoring posts is uh, is much smaller than the negative sentiment post. And as I explained to Davin, is that is a subset, is largely a subset of the negative sentiment post. Okay, so this is the somehow like address Andreas's question is that even we don't we don't think about we don't think about the spike in general. This is purely correlation. The information flow about Weibo post talking about vaccine in location, whether they will affect the form of vaccine procurement. And we run an OLS regression on the, the, on the, the outcome variable, which is just the number of open bit in log, a number of non open bit, and the, open, the shell open bit format procurement. And this is the lag one month before the before the procurements, though, so it's a one month lag, two months lag, and three months lag. And this is the number of post, vaccine post per capita. So it seems there is a positive correlation between the number of posts with a two months lag and the, and the procurement format. So this is suggests that even in regular time, there is this correlation, either because of the local governments actively monitoring the situation or because of this is really the 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 information flow on social media reflects some local sentiments or local attention they can you can observe in newspaper or some other informational channel that that the local governments they make the local government aware of the issue so that could be some some but this is like there's no this is purely correlation there is no no causality so to infer causality to have a causal implication we Use the event study in 2016. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, just for curiosity, uh, does you know the way the, the spike you know ends uh, uh, makes a difference? To say that you know uh, the government uh, intervened and somehow you know just uh, stop people from talking about this on Weibo or, uh, versus uh, they did something uh, effective. Uh, improve a uh, 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 promise to do something uh, afterwards. So uh, I'm I'm just curious. Uh, you know, it seems that the the, the spike goes away very quickly. Um, so is that because of uh, this is uh, kind of a natural uh, people's interest or focus just disappeared uh, uh, after a few days, or is it just because uh, some government intervention? Uh, we. So first of all, I cannot give you a definite answer. Our feeling, our feeling is that this is really natural die out the the, the trends, and the government intervention is I will show you is um, in, is appear in another way is the local government inject a lot of information, is rather than take removing information, the inject propaganda information. So that is what we observe from the data, and and we believe this is there's not so much censorship going on. In this and in, in 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 related to the vaccine issue, and we find the short-term information no spike has a long-term impact. So that is it's also so, so if you think about if there is a government intervention to control the information flow, and then our estimation may be really maybe small. The so our estimation is maybe a lower bound. Yeah, that's right. But you know, when you say government injected a lot of information, you mean the government uh, uh, clarified the situation, or the government made a lot of uh, uh, promises? Make a lot of promises. So there is a tone change. So at the beginning, and then a few days later, they changed the tone. So I will show you in the in the in the in the few okay. slides. So this event is really used the Sandong scandal, problem scandal. So that's, uh, I remind you that this is a vaccine distributor, which is a subcontractor on a surprise winning in government, government procurement. 
and they saw defective expired vaccines to in 24 provinces. They claim that 18, there's some data showing that it's 18, and there so some some documents shows that 24 provinces for a long time. And the local governments tried to cover up the news, but the news was leaked by an online media outlet, the, the paper, Peng Pai, Xin Wen Wang, on March 18. And this generated heated discussion on social media. Of course, the events, other than gen the event generated a lot of discussion, a spike, as we, we saw before, the event itself also have some impact. One impact is they triggers a, a more strict national regulation of vaccine distribution, basically raise the bar of subcontracting. So now you need to be qualified to be a subcontractor of the vaccine to, to sell vaccines. And second, they increase the transparency. So they basically require all the procurement reported to a provincial level digital platforms. But this is this is implemented only until 2017. And finally, anecdotal evidence. And we, we, we are going to show some evidence. This is uh, leads to the shortage of vaccine supply. People complain they cannot buy, they cannot get, get vaccine after, after the event. So these are the impact of the event. And this, of course, for our purpose of identifying the effect of social media, these will generate some confounding factors we have to handle carefully. So before we handle the, the confounding effect of this, of the event, the direct impact of the events, well, let's look at the, how the event induce uh, information eruption. So let's focus on the Weibo post, which is this solid blue line. So you can see here is the is March 16, and this is March 18. So before March 18, there was no, there was very, really little discussion about about vaccine on Weibo. And all of a sudden, because the leak of the of the the leak by the by the online media paper, and there was a, a little spike. And then there's some discussion. Then a few days later, because they, it becomes a, a bigger and bigger issue, then there is a huge informational spike after 20s. A lasting, as a, as as Michael just says that the it, it, it the, the spike just basically collapsed after two days, but it, there is still a significant number of, of posts talking about vaccine safeties. And it basically after two weeks and it, the discussion was is becomes basically silent. So it's a short period. And this is we also so show that the the number of articles talking about vaccine safety from WeChat public accounts. This is a these articles are WeChat accounts, public account focusing on on specializing in public health issues. And also, we also plot the data about newspaper reports. And the purpose is to see that it's not be, the Weibo spike occurs either at the same time or before the other the reporting from other information sources. OK, and this is like over time. There's a variation, and we basically try to convince you. I, we are trying to convince you that this is uh, exhausting the shock. And, and more importantly, we are trying what we are going to use for identification is regional variation. So the regional variation is 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 there is a as I said is a is a dramatical change in the landscape of in, the informational landscape. So this is February 2016, and there is little discussion other than Beijing. There is little there is not so much discussion or basically equally little discussion about vaccine safety all over the country. And then because of the scandal. In March, we observed there is a lot of discussion with different intensity across region in China. And, and one month or two weeks later, it, the discussion is basically becomes uh, much less intensive. And in many places, it becomes sil a silent issue. And two months later, it basically revert back to the original situation. So the identification or the variation we are going to use for identification is the difference between March and February across regions. So we create a, a shock called Weibo shock, which is the, 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 the we calculate in the, the difference between two numbers. One number is the number of monitoring posts per capita in the event months, 
minus the average number of monitoring posts three months before the event. So it's basically the difference between March and February in each city. And YIT is the outcome variable, as I said, is the share of the log number of open bits. And the event is the dummy in or after the scandal month, the March 2016. And we include in this specification, we include a, bunch, a lot of time variant controls, and most of them are at the yearly level. So here, the sample will be two years. So two years is yearly level is really like slow moving variables. So that's why we want to isolate a, a time variant variable control variable called post base. So this is a monthly level is the number of total posts talking about vaccines containing the Chinese word vaccine at the monthly level. And this control try to capture the, the, the attention to vaccine issue in a month. And we have a two includes a two way fixed path at the city prefecture level and the year month fixed path. And we use the two way clustering strategies for the standard errors. And the effect on open base, so we have to, to remind you that the, this is the event month and the sample period is one year before the month, the event month, and one year later. So we have two years of data and, and includes 280, about one, two thirds of the Chinese prefecture, about 208 prefectures in the, in the sample. And this is the result. The outcome variable I show you is the open, the, the share of open bit. And this is the difference in different estimation of the Weber shock effect. And let's focus on the overall, including all kinds of procurement related to vaccines. And the difference between the column one and column two is that in the column one, we include provincial fixed effect. In column two, we include prefectural fixed effect. The reason why, because it's natural to control prefectural fixed effect, if we want to see the weeding variation. And the reason why we include the pre provincial fixed effect is because of if we use pre prefectural variation, the, the variation, the, the panel is, is pretty unbalanced because a lot of prefectures we don't observe, they procure both before and after the event months. So in this, so that's why we want to, to control provincial fixed effect to have a more balanced panel to, to, to see is there any selection bias. I I also wonder whether I understand the you use the standard design, but why would you expect this kind of shock to be a local? Maybe the difference between column one and two already suggests it's not really you know it has a lot of spill over. Uh, yeah, so that's a that's a good question. I'm also I was very surprised to see that the effect is so localized. So the local effect is a uh, so the local effect is like Weibo becomes a local newspaper. So there are two reasons. One is that there could be two reasons. One is from the like the consumer side, like the so the people get that information is even Weibo is national. People get information from their friends, so maybe localized information flow. That's one reason. Another reason I think is the local government they monitor their local information. They purposefully put more weight on their local information. So yeah. Well, this is uh, fascinating because it's almost almost where China is like a uh, democracy where they only care about uh, the local voters. <laughs> anyway, it is uh, what we can. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, from that's the, yeah, from, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's 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 exactly the point I want to share. The message I want to share is really like Weibo is a national, is a technology nationally available, but like government regard it as a as a as some some tools for their for their local purposes like advance their career or doing something else or understand the gauge their local sentiment so and i'm going to show you if i hope i have enough time to show you a lot of evidence suggesting this point according to the same point and i was very surprised to be honest it's really oh there is such a local effect and this way will become a local newspaper so, so you know, uh, I know you're running out of time, but uh, I just want to follow up uh, um, on the same issue. Um, you know, I would be very surprised. Uh, probably I missed something, or this is not the first time for me to see the paper. I probably still missed something important. So, if the spike lasts for only a few days, uh, 
it strikes me as why you know the local government wants to uh, take serious measures. Uh, they just wait and uh, let the event die out, uh, and they 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 don't have to worry about that. After two days, the event will go away. Maybe the difference is uh, the duration. I understand you you count you know the, the number of uh, posts, but uh, you know maybe. Uh, no matter how many posts uh, were posted in two days, the government won't care about that. What they care is how long they have been put into huge pressure. Maybe, you know, if uh, if the event locally lasted for two weeks, maybe, then they they would, they would try to do something. I, I don't know, but that just strikes me, uh, you know, if it's two-day event, why, why they want to care about that? It goes back to Rachel's question, you know, uh, it, it, it's really striking to see uh, why local governments would like to do that. Yeah. So, so yeah. No, that's uh, so. In so in the first time when I presented a paper, it, yeah, you I didn't tell you the, the there's a part of the result is really the local government response. So why the local government want to respond to such a so period? It's not two days. It's about two weeks. So the the it's about two weeks. So there's two issues. One is that I'm going to show you that the local government is really worried about inspection like the central government or the upper level government will send a team to inspect and uh, and this kind of transparency or in procurement like open big this is something like a focal point of the inspection this is easily it's very easy to verify other thing is maybe like which you have a relationship with the with the winners or not those is really difficult to verify but for the kind of procurement format it's very easy to, to verify so that's something that's easy to, 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 to change. So they would rather, they don't want to risk their career. So they make this change. Second, for the local government, they may not be able to predict the, how long the, the sentiment or the information flow will, will, will last. So two, two weeks, I think is maybe is, is, uh, is long enough to change, to have an impact on their behavior. And this is related. This is also related to one project I'm working on. Another project is really look at the time series. So the variation for the time series helps predict the events. So maybe there is some like declining sentiments or declining change, and then they, they leads to no event, no intervention. There is no need to inter intervene for the local governments. When the sentiment keep going up, there is accumulated sentiment. Then this will lead to government intervention. But this is a separate project. This is a, like very much along along the line of your of your comment and suggestion thank you so and this is just look at the the level effect this is the share and then is driven by increasing in the in the number of open bits and the and the not so much change is, is the number open bit and we find the effect is really more pronounced or is basically driven by the category two and as we I discussed at the very beginning this is a, a market with a uh, large business opportunities and a lot of opportunity for, for 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 corruption is not that well regulated and this is the in the difference in, in difference and this is the dynamic so amounts of the event is super noisy and then the effect is very it comes very quick quick it's like one month after the event we already observed local government started to change their behavior and it lasts for quite a while so so and then I yeah I regret I show you this 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 one but I I apologize I am not able to get into the detail so basically I use the IV approach to isolate the the, the impact from of, of information we use a Weibo penetration in the early stage in 2009 and in this stage con conditional or all, all this bunch of control in the paper we shows four figures to to argue that it is basically control is random after we control this, this this variable and the result is pretty similar to the to the to the to the baseline result and and for the sake for the interest of time i'm going to skip the the iv and go to 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 tell you how do we rule out the confounders the event the policy and other informational channels so the event if they may have the different different regions that just respond to the same event the sandom sandom event and is really not respond to social media so to look out this possibility or to examine the impact of the event, we basically create a, a variables to calculate distance between the city and the Shandong province, the capital city of Shandong. And presumably, if the location is closer to the Shandong, the troublemaker, and, and, 
we 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 put, we we assume there is a larger effect, but we don't find such effect according to distance. And interestingly, we find when there is a vaccine shortage, so the event caused a vaccine shortage. We measure the shortage is a dummy variables where we observe or we know that people complain about about they they are not they are not able to get the jab get the get the vaccines. So we find there is a negative effect on the vaccine procurement. And this is consistent to what I said at the very beginning, there is a trade-off. If we use open bit, then it will take too long. It will take a long time. So when there is a vaccine shortage, local governments, if they care about the local citizen, they wouldn't use the open bit. They want to use other, other procurement format. Despite this negative effect, the direct effect of the, of the vaccine shortage, we find the information the wave shot effect is more or less stable. It's the, more or less the same as the as the baseline result. So this result is pretty robust. The information effect is, is always there. And we look out the policy shot, we collect the, the exact actual timing of implementing the new regulation policy, increasing transparency, reporting procurement to the to the provincial level platform, and we find no effect of this policy. So the effect and the, and the including this policy does not change the effect of the Weibo shock. And other informational channel, we use newspaper shock or search of the, from the Baidu index about the, of, about the, the, the vaccine. And, and we, again, we find that the, the, the Weibo effect is just more, just remain the same. The magnitude as, is more or less the same as the, the baseline result. And now I, how much time do I have? So I have only eight minutes. So let me, I, I, I need to speak a little bit. Uh, so this is really that go back to, to Michael's question is really how government, local government responds to. One way to respond is really, is very highly visible. You can tell the central government, hey, I do address public concerns. It, and the cost is really low. It's just like you block on, 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 on Weibo using your, the government accounts. And we observe a tone change. You know, on the regular time, you talk about vaccine safety issue. And then during this spike period or this event period, you talk about accountability. So we, what we do is that we do a LDA type of topic modeling, and then we by observing the top topic words, and we classify there are three topics that are related to routine work and two topics about accountability. And then we see that there is a tone change during the first time period the first week of the event and afterwards they talk about both accountability and also talk about routine work so there is a tone change and the other effect is on the procuring agency so the local government use both national and local agency for vaccine procurement and the advantage of use nas using national agency is to search more widely but the process will be slower and the advantage of use local agency is that they are easier to control and is more cooperative so you can procure the vaccine faster. And this is important when you use open bid. You know that and so you tend to use the, the local agency to shorten the duration. And this is what we observe in the data in the city that they experience a larger Weibo shock. We observe they use more, more they switch from the national agencies to the to prefectural level agencies. And the mechanism, so, so far we basically show you that without the eruption of social media information in this kind of counterfactual framework, we are unlikely to observe the pattern of vaccine procurement in the data. So that is our, our, so our sense of causal inference is really counterfactual without eruption of social media, but we don't really know the mechanism. So I will show you, I will tell you the mechanism a little bit. So we basically look at two issues. One is the source of the media effect is caused by specific information shock or is a general wave of penetration and this is the issue raised by by Jewish at the very beginning because they have very different different accountability implication if it is like specific information shock the effect will be short term not long lasting and it is general wave of penetration or technology effect it will long lasting and maybe leads to some institutional change so that's why we want to see whether it's driven by by specific information shock or not and the other one is that we talk about is we want to see is that what is the political incentive 
it is accountable to citizens, to the voters, or to upper level government. So it's the top down, is the up, upward accountability or downward accountability is caused by bottom up pressure or top down pressure. So the way to look at the specific general shocks, the easy ways to see is just include a general shock. So we in, in this the regression, we include a, another interaction term. And the way we book 2011 to 2012 is the is the number of posts talking about many, many issues, not just vaccine. It's about any political economic issue during these two years in these cities in these two years. So this is a, a measure of general informational shock caused by, by Weibo is not specific. And so if there is a, a general shock effect, technology effect, it should be it should increase local government's sensitivity to a specific event, but we don't find anything. So it suggests that it's really driven by Weibo shock. And this is the easy way to look at, to distinguish these two channels. And uh, another way to look at this one is to look at other events. So we look at two other events. One is a hot fake event. So in this event, it's not real scandal. It's a fake scandal. It is just a death. A woman died because of the dog bite, even after taking the rabies vaccines. And this leads to heated Weibo discussion about vaccine safety. So if so this is suggests that oh this is a this is not really driven by an event it's really driven by the information followed by an event. And another type of event we want to look at is the silent real event. Is a real event if it is the general Weibo technologies that cause the effect. If there is a real event, the local government should respond. But for this specific event, it's real but it's silent because people get distracted to another event, to a, a very sensational news concurring at the same concurring at the same time. So, so for this silent scandal, we find no effect. So for a hot fake event, we find a significant effect. And for this kind of silent scandal, there is no effect. So this provides another piece of evidence suggesting it is driven really by event specific information. And we also find another, I don't have time to go over the, this, 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 this event in detail. You basically look at the event in 2018. And if, if this is a very special event, it's not about circulation, it's about production. So this has an impact on only on those locations, those governments, those locations where there are vaccine producers. If in your location there is no vaccine producer, local government do, did not respond at all to the information. Again, this suggests that event specific information matters, not the general penetration matters. And finally, in the last two minutes, I let me talk about the bottom up pressure and the top down pressure. How do we test this, this which channel? So this is the three hypothesis. I will just tell you without showing the results. So in cities with a larger demand for high quality vaccines, if the government responds model event, this suggests a bottom up mechanism. Or you care about local citizens' welfare. And if in cities where local governments are more likely to face inspection, for example, you are low-level governments, you have many upper-level governments, they may send a team to inspect you. So you face high, larger top-down pressure, then you respond more. And in cities where local officials have a stronger career concern, for example, you are younger as a, as a city leaders, you are younger or you are in your first term or your tenure, then you may respond more. So this will be suggested evidence on the on the top down mechanism, and we find evidence like this evidence really along just like confirm our hypothesis. So it basically confirmed that the top down mechanism is much more important than the bottom up mechanism. So the main result we show that public opinion on social media increases procedural transparency in government procurement of vaccines. And local governments are responsive to event specific information shocks, not the general social media penetration. And the mechanism is basically local government strategic response to top down inter intervention. And this shed light on the theoretical debates of whether social media are useful for monitoring in non democracies. And for accountability application, is basically we show that it is useful for upward accountability, is better for, is good for policy comp compliance and policy coordination but it is really bad for 
a market that requires local adaptation. So there are tendency of over-relaxation and have very limited effect for public accountability. Okay, so I think I'm right. Sorry, um, one minute late. Uh, can I have a more question? Sure, perfect timing. You feel free to ask questions. So we have five minutes, uh, so people also feel free to, to, to take a break. We will continue in five minutes here yeah, for another paper. Yeah, I have, I have a question on the Libra shock uh, measurement. So I, I'm, I'm thinking of the salience of this uh, Weibo process discussion too. Do we have any data on the, the trending in the Weibo Europe? So, so maybe in some prefecture, there are uh, more trending, they are more trending on the, on the Weibo. So that could be more salient for the local government. What do you um, mean more trend? Yeah, Europe, so yeah, maybe maybe the the vaccine topic in some prefecture there are some many uh, many post discussions uh, with discussions uh, of vaccine, but they are not hot trendy on on the on the list. So maybe not very salient for the local government. What do you mean trendy? So here is really, this is the number of posts that they are really yeah. have monitoring implication. So the number of monitoring posts. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm thinking of uh, alternative measures. You are thinking about the, the structure of this uh, we will post. Maybe, maybe some in some locations there is a trending on the uh, the we will show. So, so the, that could be more salient public pressure for the local government. Yeah, but we will show those kind of thing is like national. Yeah, well, I think I, I think I also have local, a, a local yeah, maybe level. there is a local level. So we can yeah, that's the uh, we can if if we can go back to look at those data. So maybe there is yeah, a, yeah we can whether there's on the top of the of the of the like the hot topic list on yeah. the on Weibo. I don't know whether we can get those data or not, but this is a a good suggestion and another is really along the line of Michael's suggestion. We can look at the the time variation, the time series of the of the information flow. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, wait. Uh, so you, you didn't have time to show us, uh, you know, this uh, this top down thing. It's actually very interesting. I have a slightly different interpretation. Uh, say, uh, you know, low level uh, politicians, they are kind of more concerned, more incentivized to to respond to uh, this uh, this information, uh, uh, this event. Um, it could be the case that actually low rank uh, uh, politicians uh, they they have uh, less uh, political connections. They, they don't have much political cover. So that's why they have to do it. Uh, and, you know, think about the city level and higher, uh, uh, you know, ranked officials. And they, they probably have uh, more uh, connections and they, they can talk to uh, central government. They can talk to, you know, inspection teams that, you know, uh, don't, don't, don't look at uh, my territory. You, you should look for those things in other places. So that's a, a, another, you know, uh, uh, mechanism. Uh, so another related thing is, uh, uh, you know, um, it strikes me as, uh, I, I mean, that's probably related to uh, another of your papers that that, that, that is uh, uh, how, you know, the central government is collecting information. Uh, so what I learned from that is uh, the central government or, you know, uh, the high uh, uh, level uh, government, they actually, uh, uh, it seems that at least the local government, lower ranked uh, officials, they believe high ranked uh, governments are keeping track of, uh, you know, Xinlang uh, Weibo or whatever, you know, that is uh, 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 that that is going viral. So they, they're going to use that uh, uh, to to identify, you know, what are the uh, places that need to be inspected. So yeah. it's just uh, just two thoughts. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, that's the, the last one is very interesting is because it basically there is technology available and then even the central government may not need to use the technology. As long as the local government believe that the central government will use the technology, they will, they will, there is a disciplinary effect. 